Hey, welcome to another episode of Camp and Camera. Today we're going solar. So now let's go to the tongue box. You can see I've got the new battery setting in place, but I don't have it hooked up. Um, this coil of wire is the coil of wire from the solar panel that I had pre-wired in there when I built the camper. What I need to do, according to what I've researched on the net, and I'm sure some of you will chime in and correct me if I'm wrong here, um, I'm going to go from this coil of wire to this on-off switch so that I can disconnect the solar if I need to. I'm going to go from there down to either two fuses or two breakers and in my case i'm going to use two breakers these are five amp breakers um, 50 volt that'll hold the uh, voltage and the amperage of the solar panels and i've just put this little black box i'm going to put a black box in here to put the circuit breakers on i go from there to my victron charge controller i go from the charge controller to a fuse a 15 amp fuse on the hot lead over to the battery so that'll be the connection so the first thing I want to do is make up the breaker box that goes between the switch and the charge controller and the breaker box again will be two um, 5 amp breakers capable of holding 50 volts and I'll have one on the positive and the negative um, this is what the breaker looks like it's just one of these little push-in breakers and I've just bought this little plastic box it was like three dollars I think I'm gonna make a breaker box out of that I'm gonna have these breakers side by side actually coming out of the top of the box and I'm just going to mark off where they're going to be that way I can drill some holes so I went ahead and drilled four holes in the bottom that way I can put the wires up to each uh, connector on the breakers so now to mount the breaker box I'm just going to mount it near the top of the tongue box. So now I need to take these coiled up positive and negative wires and run a positive to one breaker and a negative to the other breaker and then run a positive out and a negative out. And I'm just going to do that with these little crimp on terminal connectors. Now that I've got the breaker box made up, I went ahead and screwed the charge controller in place. I'm running a, a negative from the breaker straight to the charge controller, but the positive I'll be running into a switch before the charge controller. So now I'm gonna make up this switch, and it's basically just a switch like you would turn the main power from your battery your whole camper off with. So I know it's certainly gonna be heavy enough. I just crimped some of these ring terminals on this 10 gauge wire and uh, one goes into the switch, one goes out. So I just ran the positive wire from the output of the switch over to the input of the charge controller. Now I just need to run two wires from the charge controller to the battery. Okay, so I've got the electrical made up. I've got 10 gauge wires coming from the bottom from the solar panel. They go into a breaker box with two 5 amp breakers because these are it's going to be a 2.71 amp system um, coming into the charge controller anyway. It leaves there. It goes to the switch. It leaves for the switch. It goes to the charge controller. From the charge controller, 
the positive lead goes through a fuse, a 15 amp fuse because it's a 15 amp charge controller, and then to the battery. The last thing to do is just to tidy all these wires up and make it look good and clean. I'll do that later. Let's plug the solar panels in, see how it works. So let's talk just a moment about Parallel versus Series. There are tons and tons of opinions about which is better on the internet. I did a lot of research on this. I ended up going with series. Parallel, um, let's say you have two 20 volt panels. Um, they both stay, the, the system stays at 20 volts, but your amperage will double. On a series connection, your amperage stays the same, but your voltage doubles. Now, the reason I did series is I read a very compelling article that basically said in the early morning and in the late evening, um, in, in a very low sun condition, your solar panel is not going to be putting out you know, 100% of its voltage. It's going to be putting out something less. On a 12-volt system, uh, in my case, a 12-volt AGM battery, it's fully charged at around 12.8 volts. So just for giggles, I thought, well, if I have around a 20-volt solar panel and it's only putting out half of its voltage, that's like 10 volts. Um, that's not even enough to start the panel charging. But if I double the voltage, and let's say I'm putting out 40, 44 volts, um, <clears throat> and it, it rated at 50%, that's still 20. That's still more volts than what the battery needs to start charging in the morning and to finish off charging in the evening. Now, the amperage may not be as high, but I'm running an MPPT charge controller by Victron. And from the research I've done, what I understand is that it will take that excess voltage and it will change that over into amperage. So I think I should be able to start charging earlier in the morning and start, you know, keep charging later into the evening. Now the downside to this is that if I park in the shade, if one of my panels is in the shade, it's kind of like the old time Christmas lights where you pull a bulb out and the whole system goes down. Well, that's what a series is going to do to you. If you shade one of those panels and the other one's in the sun, it's going to go off the shaded panel, so you're not going to be putting out much, if anything at all. So I have to be uh, a little more aware of where I park the camper. I'm not too worried about that, though. I would rather just move the camper over a few feet if I have to um, and be able to get that little bit extra charge. Now, that's just what my research tells me. If you understand or have experiences different than that, put some comments below. I mean, I can always swap a couple wires around and go back to parallel from series. Now for the sake of time, I won't put this on the video, but you'll notice that the wires on the front side and on the back side of the vent fan um, are sticking up in the air and they can flop around whenever we're going down the road. I've got some little adhesive back clips that will just make those secure that'll clip them down to the top of the camper, but I won't show that now. If this thing's working right, we should just be able to turn the switch on. And I do see a steady blue light on, which would indicate that it's charging. Um, this is a Bluetooth solar controller. I need to um, download the manual and the app and learn more about that, but it does appear to be charging. All right, I'm just so excited to get this Victron app up and running. And the first thing it does is make me wait on a firmware update. It's killing me. Okay, so I got the charge controller uh, paired Bluetooth with the phone. And right now it says that I'm charging at a rate of two watts or the current is a tenth of an amp, but the sun has went down and I'm completely in the shade. So let me pull this thing around to the, to the sun and see how it changes. So let me show you this screenshot. I just moved the truck to where the camper is facing the sun a bit better, but the sun is super low on the horizon. It's only a couple hours before dark, but my 100 total combined watts of solar uh, even at this super low angle in the evening is, is putting out 15 watts of electric. Um, going to the charge controller from the solar panel is 34.6 volts at 0.4 amps. And from the charge controller to the battery is 13.7 volts at 1.1 amps. So this is great. Even in the late evening, I'm, you know, as long as it's sunny, I'm still getting some, some juice going into the battery. I'm really excited to see what it's going to do in the midday sun. As I learn more about the Victron charge controller, I'll try to maybe in a future video give you a better review on it. But I can already see that it has um, a page for history and has a page for trends. And you can see in real time what your um, solar controller is doing. Let me scroll to the right here and you can see the graph being populated 
one line is for the voltage one is for current and I can change those I have menus that I can change to different items so as I learn more about this I'll give you an update on another video of how well the Victron charge controller works and what my thoughts are of so there we have it we just put two 50 watt Renogy solar panels in series on top of the camp easy teardrop we're running that down to a Victron 15 amps charge controller and then going into a 100 amp hour wise AGM battery. Um, I'm really happy with the install. It seems like it's working already, working well, even in this low sun condition. Got a lot more to learn about it though. It's only like 30, 45 minutes old. Um, probably will do a separate video just on the Victron charge controller, especially with its Bluetooth functions. I think that'd be pretty cool. And I do need to do a little cleaning up on the wires. I need to tidy the wires up in the tongue box, you know, wrap those together. I need to put the cable clips on top of the camper, but don't want to waste video time for that. But so far, so good. Hey, if you like what you saw here, give me a thumbs up. Believe me, it helps the channel grow more than you know. And if you want to come back, hit that subscribe button. So until next time, take care. We'll see you on the road.